One of the most satisfying parts of a good platformer is just barely being able to make a jump that you thought might not be possible. It gives the player a nice boost of adrenaline and gives the player a positive feedback loop that persuades them to keep playing for that small boost of dopamine every time you land one of those jumps. Although sometimes there are jumps that are extremely annoying, where the character clearly should have jumped when you press the A button, and it's our job as developers to create a much more forgiving environment. While failure is a great thing in video games, it is never our job to create a BS situation. The player is running at their top speed in order to make a long jump from point A to point B. To make a long jump, ideally the player would input their jump at the last possible moment before disaster. So in a perfect world, they would press the jump button right about here. The problem with this is if the player misses their input by just a couple frames, they would fall to their doom and have to start over. Instead of creating this annoying scenario that could, in the worst case, cause the player to throw their controller at the ground, we can instead add a little bit of forgiveness to the player. By adding a slight extension to the time you would normally have to press the jump button, it creates a much more rewarding environment and eliminates a lot of the annoyance to the player in situations like this. There are a couple methods to go about implementing this into your game. You could A extend the hitbox, but that creates some unnecessary geometry that doesn't really make sense if you're just walking over it. Option B is to extend the hitbox of the player. This is slightly better, and if we use something like a capsule shaped hitbox, the extension can provide a little more wiggle room for jumps, while the capsule shape provides a way for the player to still slide off if they remain at the edge of a platform. The best method though is to simply add a delay to when you check if you can jump or not. In Unreal, we use the is falling from the character movement to check if the player is mid-air or not. As long as we just check the is falling from a couple frames ago, this adds a little bit of delay after you start falling to still be able to jump after the platform ends. This is called Platform Ledge Forgiveness, and if you want to know more about it, you can check out some of the links in the description that describe it in more detail, but that was the short of it. If you've ever tried to make a platformer from scratch with gravity built in engine, or if you've ever played some of the very early development platformers on itch.io, you'd soon realize that the jump is either too small or it feels very floaty. This is because engines like Unreal replicate how gravity works in real life. Let's look at a non-platformer game like Apex Legends that wants to replicate real gravity as closely as possible. If we take a side view of a legend jumping and plot the points along the arc, we can see that the arc created is exactly or very close to a perfect parabola. This is how gravity works in the real world and you can see this replicated in most realistic games. The problem is platformers aren't realistic. A parabolic jump feels great when it is short and small, but as soon as you turn up the jump velocity in order to provide the player with a way to make larger and larger jumps, the parabolic motion quickly feels extremely floaty. There's this large amount of time where the character is in mid-air, in which they are just sitting there with little control. As a game designer, it is our job to give the player as much control as possible in a common gameplay situation like a simple jump, and this parabolic motion just doesn't allow us to do that. Even Super Mario Bros one of the first examples of a modern day platformer, manipulated the gravity and thus has an arc that doesn't reflect the real world. If we use the same method and plot the points along the arc, we get an oblong parabola. The beginning of the two jumps match up pretty well, but nearing the peak of the jump, the gravity is manipulated to force Mario quickly to the ground, thereby giving the player more time to control the character and less time in a floating mid-air state. To replicate this, we can use a variety of different methods, but the method I used in our game is definitely my favorite of the bunch. You are developing a roguelike platformer where you play as the dad who went out to get the milk, but has been whisked away to another universe and you have to find your way back to your son. So back to the problem. In the first couple days of development of, um, codename Project Jug for now, we tried a couple different methods to mitigate this. The solution we chose in the end was to influence the parabola by changing the scale of gravity at certain moments of the jump. In Unreal, we used what is called a timeline, which essentially changes the value over time according to a curve. So if we look at the curve of this jump, the gravity scale begins at one, and as soon as the player reaches their peak, the timeline transitions the gravity scale to two. This forces the player down faster and eliminates a lot of the time that they would normally spend midair. A much simpler way of doing this is just by using a delay. After you jump, you can wait until the player is at the peak of the jump and set the gravity directly to two. I prefer the first method though because I think that it is a much smoother transition because there is an ease in and ease out built into the timeline so the jump won't feel so binary. Let's set the scene once again. The player jumps down from a ledge 
and wants to immediately jump after they hit the ground. But they accidentally press the jump button just a frame or two before they hit the floor. Because the player was technically in a falling state, the jump never activated, and in a life or death situation, that could be quite unfortunate. To solve this issue, we can use input buffering, or more specifically, jump input buffering. Input buffering is used all over in games, and you probably don't even notice it. In many games, pressing the attack button right before a previous attack ends queues up another attack, and in this case, pressing the jump button just before landing will queue in a jump. This problem has a very simple solution. Instead of having a direct connection between input and jump, we can set a timer for a couple ticks that will activate the jump if you are on the ground in that time frame. After the jump, we set a jump queued variable, and a repeating script for the next 5 or so ticks. This script checks if you are on the ground, and if you are, it activates the jump event. After those 5 ticks, if you are still not on the ground, it sets the jump queued to false. This is a very rudimentary way of going about it, but it gets the idea across of how the system would work, without bogging down the explanation with a lot of jargon. Now that we've coded in an input buffering system, when we press the jump button a couple frames up from the ground, the player will still jump once they hit the ground, instead of just standing there. Input buffers are definitely a thing that all designers should have in their pocket, because nearly every game can benefit from light use of them. Games should be hard, but unless you're getting over it with Bennett Foddy, they should alleviate as much of the BS as possible. It is our job as designers to make something fun and not something annoying. Having methods for how to give the player more control, or make the game more forgiving, is always a good thing to have in your repertoire.